Oh boy, yet another high school romance subtext manga in Weekly Shonen Jump. I am so excited. I'm just going to get this out of the way right now. You have read this manga before. You've seen it done countless times. There are like five other manga running <laughs> in Weekly Shonen Jump or Jump Plus that have a very similar plot. But you know what? This one, it's okay. It has a, a je ne sais quoi. Authored by Genki Ono, Himeten is about Tenichi, a high schooler who works a part-time job cleaning houses. One day, a new transfer student arrives in the form of beautiful Himari, a high school CEO and influencer who runs her own successful cosmetic business. I'm sure you know where this is going. Himari's home is a fucking pigsty, and Tenichi ends up getting hired through her auntie to take care of it. From here, these two odd friends end up growing closer to one another, slowly letting down their guard amongst each other, with some external factors entering the fray to impact their growing relationship. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Himaten is anything special or anything unique. It's not quirky, it's not even the best romance or comedy that I'm reading right now. It is a lot like Nisikoi, it is a lot like We Never Learn. It is a good comparison piece to Blue Box. But what about its own identity? Does Himeten have something special about it that separates it from all of the other great romance that we have going on right now? Uh, I'm gonna say no, not really. <laughs> so far, it is a good read though. I love the characters. I think it's an interesting premise. I just don't really know how this is going to be a strong sell going forward. Tanichi is a hard worker, having saved up thousands of dollars after working part time throughout his first year of high school. His goal is to own a nice home and one day pay for college out of his own pocket. In his household, he also does the cleaning and cooking. He takes care of his twin siblings. Man, I am so sick of the tall, dark-haired, slightly introverted MC who has a couple siblings running around at home and he takes care of them. It's such a fucking tired trope. I really, really wish Mangaka would move on from it. The good thing about Ten that stands out compared to other male MCs is that like, he, he doesn't use social media, but He's tapped into like the culture, so he feels like a youthful kid. He's not a super mature badass. He is written like a teenager and he reacts like a teenager to the girls around him. Himari, on the other hand, she's pretty mature, but immature in the right ways. She's a student CEO who rents her auntie's place and lives by herself. Yeah, she's a slob, but also a hard worker. Sure, she has a mean streak, but can be kind to Ten when they're in solitude. I'm not telling you anything unique for a romance female lead. And even her character design, while she looks great, it's, it's not anything special. I'm really hoping that there's more to her personality that will arise over the next few chapters because she doesn't really stand out as a best girl in any way, shape, or form. And this applies to Kanai as well, the third in this love triangle. Having known Tenichi before grade 11, she's happy to be in the same class as him right now. They both share duties as class reps, so they have a chance to talk more now. And with Kanai starting her new job recently, a barista at the local coffee shop, she can relate to Tenichi as well. You don't usually see two wages in a love triangle, but with Himaten, we technically have three and they all earn at different levels for different reasons so yeah that's an interesting aspect of these characters and something i'm looking forward to i'm hoping it's built more upon with future chapters but what worries me is how similar it is to so many other romances himaten is not as visually intriguing as you and i are polar opposites it's not as intellectually well written as hope you're happy lemon it isn't paced as well as blue box it doesn't build up the characters like journey home after school does. There is no emotional tension like Suriko returns the favor. There is no romantic independence like what's featured in Blooming Love. There isn't as much fan service as what you would find in Kanen Sama. There's no sexual tension like what you would see in Kiriru Kill Me. And yeah, there are so many comparisons to previous weekly shonen manga like Nisikoi and We Never Learn. So what's special about Himaten? Why should you read this series? 
To be honest, I can't sell you on it based off of what we've seen in the 10 chapters so far. I can appreciate it because I have a feeling that Genki Ono is going to be able to do something interesting with these characters. Tanichi is a hard worker, but what if his goals change? What if he doesn't want to save for his own home anymore? What if he doesn't want to go to college right away? Why has Hima not been able to grow closer to anyone else? How come she's taking on such a huge responsibility at such a young age? Most influencers have a team behind them. Who is Hima's team? Kanai hasn't had much development so far, but I'm happy to see that she's being more assertive towards her crush. I would like to see her and Ten do something more within the next few weeks, but even then, like, what is there about her? What is her life like outside of the classroom? Is she more than just a fangirl of Hima and a possible paramour for Tenichi? Right now, this feels like an Archie comic. <laughs> Tenichi is Archie for sure, Hima is Veronica, and Kanai unfortunately is Betty. The thing is, those characters had a life outside of their relationships. With the writing that we've gotten so far with this series, all it feels like is tropes. Tropes and playing it safe because it's trying to survive. And I completely get that. It's important for a series to be as safe as possible so they can build up an audience. But once the readership is there, will Hima Ten be set up to be able to take any risk? The art isn't anything that stands out. Sure, I like the subtle fan service we've gotten, I like the few color pages as well, but I'm not really seeing that much uniqueness to the story. I do like the half page vertical panels that show off the style of the characters, but the close ups don't do a lot for me. Even the character design itself, it feels very reminiscent, if not <laughs> a copy pasta of Nisikoi. I think there's so much potential with Hima 10, it's only been 10 chapters. So yeah, it's not fair to say that it, it, it's a poor manga, but at the same time, Dear Anemone's fate was spelt with chapter 11. Ginka and Luna and Tokyo Demon Bride's story didn't last that much longer than where Hima 10 is right now. And I would say that those series at least had developed their plots and relationships a bit more by the 10th chapter. I do get good vibes from Hima 10 though, it's definitely something that many people would like. It's a normie series and like I said, there is definitely a lot of potential for this to go in a different direction than all of the other series that I had just mentioned. But at the same time, Hima 10 takes so much from all of those other series. There's nothing special about this manga, it doesn't really stand out so much as of yet. And I don't know enough about the mangaka to determine what their writing style is like. If you're looking for a romance subtext in high school, I, I mean, I guess I would recommend it only because there's so many chapters out, it's always nice to get in on a series from the early days. But if you want like a strong romance or a rom-com, you can go with Fragrant Flowers or Stitch Face or Polar Opposites or so many other series. Hima 10 right now feels like a companion piece to a companion piece, not something to necessarily get excited over every single week. That being said, I do enjoy what the mangaka is putting out so far and I have high hopes for this. Definitely not a 10 though, I'm, I'm gonna give this manga a, a, a 5.